Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's time for another edition of Facebook Live here at Select Sires. I'm sitting in the Chichester Center in the room we affectionately call the, the Fish Bowl uh, here in the Chichester Center, the Richard Chichester uh, uh, Conference Room, and excited to be with you this afternoon, give you a few updates from yesterday's sire summaries. Uh, obviously, we usually do this a little later in the week, uh, but based on some schedules, uh, it was better today. So um, you're getting it hot off the press from uh, yesterday's sire summaries and the best news I can give you is there's gonna be a lot of really good information in the next few minutes and, and again, as always, very happy to answer your uh, questions. So keep those coming to us and uh, we'll do everything we can to uh, answer what you can. It's kind of been tradition the last few times I've given you a few updates on what uh, changes occurred in the industry and uh, it wouldn't be a sire summary without giving you a little update on some changes that came through the evaluation system uh, through CDCB. They sent out a press release the end of last week explaining that uh, obviously we've had some DPRs that have moved up and down the last few uh, sire summaries that's made some re-rankings and those types of things and obviously nobody likes unexpected changes and so the, they heard the message uh, and the Dairy Sire Evaluation Committee through NEAB and CDCB have been working hard on this and actually uh, after the April sire summaries they, they found uh, what was causing the challenges that had to do with a uh, heifer conception rate cow conception or a uh, heifer data versus cow data in these first lactation cows they went back and they reran the last four sire summaries with the fix and it flattened things out uh, much better and gives much more of a realistic uh, trend line for improvement in reproduction and DPR and CCR and so we think we from here on out we should be in pretty good shape of understanding uh, what the changes are and it should be much more consistent and less fluctuations uh, but again once they make that fix there's always going to be some of that change that occurs so in the young bulls and usually in young females those are the populations that will drop the most so on the average yesterday uh, previously, I just ran some stats this morning. Previously, after active genomic young sires, it dropped on the average of about 38 TPI points, about 16 net merit dollars, and about 0.8 on DPR. They also dropped uh, close to a point on CCR, uh, cow conception rate, as well. On the proven bulls, the adjustments were much less. And so that was a drop of about 30 TPI points, about 12 net merit dollars and about 0.61 on DPR. So that kind of crunched the industry up a little bit again, but again, I've said this probably for the last six or seven Facebook Live sessions. The thing to remember genetically is relative rank. How do you rank in the population? If you were 2,900 and now you're 2,880 and you're still number one, you're still number one. And what we really worry about is, is the rank of the population and uh, so with that, I think there was a lot more stability in this run. We obviously saw a few re-rankings, but I think most of what we saw uh, was, was uh, unexpected uh, other than these changes that I just explained. So um, you might see a little different values, but I think at the end of the day, uh, if this has uh, truly got us on the right track to having more stable DPR values uh, through uh, spring and fall and winter evaluations, I think we'll be better off for it. So I just want to give an update on that just a little bit. And uh, uh, if you've got questions later, I'll try to answer them the best I can. Um, I'm going to get right into the industry. And, and the good news here, um, whether you uh, use, and I hope you use all of them, but no matter what product line at Select Sires uh, that you use, whether it's the 250 generation, Generations product line, the 14H Accelerated Genetics product line, or the 7H Select Sires line, uh, we had great news in all three product lines yesterday, including uh, the number one TPI bull in the breed in uh, AOT Silver Helix, uh, bred by uh, Tom Kugler out in New York. And the bull uh, has been, uh, a lot of folks asked in the last tw 24 hours, well, was that a surprise that Helix came to number one? He graduated in April, had a great day yesterday. Actually, it wasn't a surprise. In my travels over the last six or seven months, They've been, I've said to a lot of people, they're the most pleasant surprise uh, being out in the field looking at cows. Uh, they were, they've been great everywhere I've been. I uh, was in California two weeks ago and, and uh, you could tell that they were just some of the best two-year-olds in the pens. And his data reflected that yesterday. 
when you've got a bull that's over 2,800 now as a proven bull and he's 133 pounds of fat and over 200 pounds of combined fat and protein. Uh, incredibly impressive uh, statistics that he has. And they're just really well balanced, good cows, straight frames, good feet and legs. Uh, so we're very excited that uh, cookie cutter cow family that Helix uh, hails from has been really uh, important to our organization over time, giving us a lot of really great bulls and Helix is, is no exception. And I'm gonna talk a little later today about some of his sons because uh, maybe there's some of those genomic young bulls that we missed out on or you might have missed out on uh, that might be great options for you in that respect. So he did fantastic being the number one TPI bull in the breed. Secondly, uh, SSI Montrose Duke, who's been in for a while, another great high combined fat and protein bull, easily Montrose's best son at this stage of the game. He is the number two TPI sire in the breed. He's in our generations product line. Uh, goes back to the Mindy cow family through Super Sire Mabel. This is the cow fork of the Mindy's that always sired the most milk production, and Duke continues to do it. And as we travel the country as a sire team, uh, they're usually some of our favorites as well. I know this is Jordan Seymour's favorite bull. Uh, talks about him on every trip that he's been out on. And again, just terrific cows. If you get a chance to look at our website, look at some of the new Duke daughter photos because they're really impressive. But they're cows with a lot of width. They're cows with with that dairy strength that folks are asking for today. They're moderate size, but with a great open rib and Montrose others with tremendous will to milk. So we're really excited about him. Then there was the bull that everybody's been asking for the last four or five months or since the last sire summary, what's Frazzled gonna do? What's Frazzled gonna do? Um, and we were just waiting to sit patiently like the rest of you waiting for the data to come through. Uh, I had looked at probably 60 or 70 milking frazzled daughters over the course of the last four or five months. He didn't disappoint us. In fact, he's the number four TPI bull in the breed. He's the number four net merit bull in the breed. And frazzled himself is one TPI point different than he was in April. He was 2732, he's 2731 today. He puts a combination I think that most commercial uh, dairymen are gonna love. They're trouble-free cows. They're the kind of cows that they maybe aren't milking 100 pounds two weeks in the fresh pen, but when they get to 60 or 70 days in milk, they just turn on the afterburners and they're doing a great job. He's a bull that uh, came out at 21.56 of milk with uh, over 250 daughters in his proof now. Uh, he's 165 pounds of combined fat and protein. But I mentioned the commercially friendly part of this a moment ago, where he really excels is in health and fitness traits on top of that. He's one of the lowest somatic cell score bulls in the breed at 2.46. He's almost eight points on productive life. He's, as I mentioned, he's 970 net merit dollars as a proven sire. And he's easily the highest DWP proven bull there is in the industry. Uh, he's extremely good on DWP. And so this bull is really doing it all. And we're really excited. Obviously a lot of our program has been hitched to this bull over the last year, year and a half with many of the frazzled sons that we've released, whether it's been Huey, Mula, Tahiti, Legacy, who we'll talk about again in a moment, as well as a new release. But the bull has had a big influence both maternally and paternally, and he didn't disappoint. Uh, they're the kind of cows that I'm just extremely excited about when I go out and look at big batches of them. Saw 30 of them in one afternoon uh, last Wednesday. So he's the kind of bull that I think you can use with confidence, they're really free moving cows. They walk really comfortably on the rear feet and legs. He's got a little set to his leg and, and he doesn't sire uh, the, the shorter teats that, that people keep talking about. So I think he really is a bull that came along at the perfect time to work on the Jedi blood, uh, the Montrose blood, the Mogul blood in general. Here we have this bull named Frazzle that's just that really hit the mark. Uh, couldn't be happier for one of our best partners, Spencer Hackett in Rice, Minnesota, he and his wife Stacy. I've uh, been great longtime collaborators with us, and, and this is maybe a once in a lifetime bull. But he hit the mark, use him with confidence, uh, use his sons with confidence, but we're really, really happy that uh, Frazzled hit the mark yesterday. The other really exciting part about yesterday's sire summaries is we graduated a lot of bulls. Little in house bets here about how many we were going to graduate yesterday. And uh, I predicted that we were going to have 15. Uh, we had 14, including Frazzled. One of the other new releases that we brought in, they came in, as I mentioned, in all three product lines, 
The first bull I wanted to talk about is a bull from our Accelerated Genetics uh, product line, 14-8-78-11, uh, Accelerinal. And he's a Donatello son, so a little different being a Donatello. Uh, his dam is a, is a mogul that uh, I had seen in the past, a really, really good cow. The next dam is a Mano Man and then a Honeycrust Elegant. This is the same cow family that uh, the Seamers has had a tremendous amount of success with their Waz cow family. It's a different fork of that same maternal line. But he came out uh, number 14 in the breed for TPI. He or will be very, very close. My official rankings might be off by one or two. Uh, we don't have the official top 100 uh, TPI list, but we'll have that tomorrow. But a bull that's great on, con on components, he's plus 0.02 on protein, plus 0.14 on fat. He's a bull that with those high statistics for CFP, he's also 271 on type. He's three points on utter composite, and he's got a beautiful linear profile. So I think Renown's a bull that you're going to really – uh, find very easy to use. He's a good DPR bull. He's settled cows extremely well. So this bull has done a, a great job uh, and, and a really good new addition in top 20 TPI points. So I'm very excited about the, the Renown bull. I'm going to take a pause here for a second. We got our first uh, question in this afternoon this from Wayne Peters, uh, consistent uh, attendee to our Facebook Live uh, sessions. Hi, Wayne. Uh, been using Aztec on frazzled heifers after after you've seen a bunch of them. Is that going to be a good mating or use something higher in foot light composite? I think it's an excellent mating. I'm really, really high on peak Aztec. He's one of my favorite genomic young sires. We've used him heavily as a sire father. Uh, he's an exceptional bull himself. He's made really well. Uh, he's made some of the highest females in the breed. A top 100 TPI heifer in the breed is an Aztec heifer that uh, we're working with in partnership uh, with Bob Webb at Plymouth, Wisconsin, and she's out of a frazzled daughter. So the, the combination has had success already. And so I think uh, using Aztec on the frazzles is a, is a really, really good choice. So uh, thanks for that question. Along with frazzled, the Joe Super Sons we had, we were always very, very excited about. One that's kind of laid under the radar screen because maybe frazzles got a little more press, but this uh, Joe Super Son got some of his first data this time. And I want to talk about a bull, a 7H12-837 OCD Joe Super Zamboni, uh, bred by Jonathan and Alicia Lamb, uh, one of our great collaborator herds again, uh, out in New York, a bull that's got limited data, 32 daughters and 17 herds, uh, doesn't have a type proof yet, but over a ton of milk, he's 2689 in his GTPI, again, over two and a half points on type, over two and a half points on utter composite, but I think the nice part that lots of folks are going to like is that his dam is a third generation excellent. Uh, his, his dam is a mogul that's excellent. The next dam is a super daughter named Zinnia uh, that had over 53,000 pounds of milk. And then the next dam is an excellent gold one. So he's got a beautiful pedigree. He's a bull that, again, can get used on heifers. He's 7% on a sire cabinies. He's been really good on sire fertility as a young sire. He's plus 1.6 on SCR. So, again, another... Joe Superson that I think does a beautiful job, really good utter composite. I think that's the nice part about both uh, Frazzled and Zamboni is the daughters I've seen milking, really good udders. So I think you'll like the quality about their udders, the softness and the texture to them. So another bull, not in the top 100 yet because he doesn't have a type proof, but he did get some uh, production proof, and we graduated the bull as a proven graduate. The next bull is a bull that I, I know the family extremely well and very excited about the bull. Um, 7H12, 819, um, Herchenlea Yoder Outsiders, a uh, bull that was bred in southeast Wisconsin. It was a bull that uh, I had the chance to buy early in my career, uh, and he graduated uh, yesterday as the number 15 TPI bull in the breed. He's a Yoder son from a super sire daughter that's uh, 87 points. The next dam is an excellent Russell. The next dam was an 88-point old man, and then a Ramos that's really been part of the Herchen signature cow family for several years. This bull has been very, very popular as a genomic young sire because he's been a great Cavanies bull and, the, and a great fertility bull. Uh, he continues to be both of those things. He's 5.8 on Cavanies, so you can use this bull uh, really uh, consistently in your heifer pens and feel good about that. He settles cows extremely well. A bull that's 1955 on milk and 2689 on GTPI. So as I said, that makes him probably the number 15 TPI bull in the breed when the official list comes out tomorrow. He's a solid type bull at 1.6 on type, 1.6 on udders, 1.58 on foot and leg composite. 
So he does a lot of things right that way. He's a very solid health and fitness bull as well. So I think he can use this bull with a lot of confidence. We've had several of these daughters. Uh, we use them heavily in the art program. And I've seen a lot of daughters of them milking in either our partner herds uh, or across the country. Been really nice cows. He's got 147 daughters in his proof. He's got a, about uh, 60 of them scored so far. And this bull does a really good job of making trouble free cows again. I'd watch him in terms of his, his leg set. Again, a bull that you probably want to use more on, on some cows that maybe have a little more set to their leg. I think he actually he'll make a really good mating on frazzled daughters and give you a really a, a great option again along with peak Aztec if you're looking more towards proven bulls. But a bull that, that came out, uh, he's a Cavanese bull, he's available in gender selected form, but a bull that as we keep seeing the daughters of him, we're just really excited about what this bull can do for us. And, and so he was a really good graduate as well. Also on the top, somewhere in the top 30, 35 bulls in the breed, is a bull from uh, Kevin Peck out in, the, uh, in New York, 7-H-12-801 Clear Echo Sumo. He's a BB Kappa casing bull. He's a bull, again, that's in the top 30, 35 bulls of the breed, 1,800 pounds of milk, 130 pounds of CFP, 2,600 on his GTPI as a proven sire. He's another cogent super shot. We graduated several of the super shot sons in this sire summer, and they're all really balanced bulls as well. Uh, this this cow, this bull goes back to the same cow family that gave us um, Bookham and Reflector. Goes back into the same cow family as Ramos 1200. His dam is a, is a very good uh, numero uno. The next dam was a man o man that was was an 86 point cow, and then an excellent Loudon daughter that was a sister to Ramos 1199 and Ramos 1200, and that's Bookham and Reflector's cow family. Bull that fits our feed pros designation. He's got a very modern linear profile, not too tall but everything's right-sided, doesn't shorten teats, doesn't add straightness to the leg. So again, I think of another really good graduate who came in and I think uh, you want to take a look at him. One of the surest bets of everybody that was going to graduate this week was a bull that uh, I had as much confidence as anything. Uh, and that uh, is a, a one of our early King Boy sons, 7H12-787, Plain No King Royal. Uh, this bull has been, again, some of my favorites uh, traveling the country in the last six or seven months, seeing them cab in. Uh, they were great young cows. I have a big, right across the page, balance. That's really what King Royal is. He sires really balanced cows. And no surprise that he is in that he's a king boy son, great customer satisfaction bull. His mother was an 88-point mogul that was probably the best cow that SSI has ever bred. At Steve Bushers in Ohio. She's a marvelous young cow that she was 88 as a two year old. The next dam is a 91 point Socrates who was a full sister to Robust and then Old Man Mirror behind that. So he's got a, a familiar pedigree but a full pedigree. He came in at 3.14 in type as a proven sire and that's an 83 daughter scored. He's just shy of three points in utter composite at 2.95 and he's 1.9 on foot and leg composite. He's a bull that really sires a lot of components. He's very good on percent fat and percent protein, but he's 125 pounds of combined fat and protein. And like I say, surest thing that I knew if there was one bull that was gonna graduate yesterday, it was King Royal and he didn't disappoint us. He's 1.4 on, on sire conception rate as well. So he's always been a great fertility bull, been one of our most popular genomic young sires, but a bull that I think you really uh, have to appreciate. The next bull, Again, and there's a, a lot of these graduates, not talking about all of them, but a lot. I wanted to talk about the ones in the top 100. Another bull in the accelerated product line is 14H7780 Excel Force. And he's another Joe Super son, like Frazzled and Zamboni. Uh, his mother, again, goes back into Bookham and, and uh, Reflector's cow family, but through a mogul that the Seamers family bred, uh, that was a very good cow as a young cow, then an excellent 92 point observer daughter that went through the national convention sale in uh, uh, back in Virginia, and then Ramos 1200 herself. A bull that's over a ton of milk at 2085. He's 131 pounds of combined fat and protein. He's 2572 in his GTPI. Again, consistent to what I keep saying, good sire fertility, good cavities at 6%, and a really pretty linear profile that he had set to the leg, and he doesn't sire longer teeth. So again, a great addition in his regard. Another bull that I think does some very unique things and other of the Super Shot Sons who graduated is 7H12724 
T's for super shot Wiggins. Wiggins is another super shot son, but I know a lot of folks are looking for A2A2, BB Kappa casein, some of the more auxiliary traits. Well, Wiggins delivers on them. And, and again, a bull that I've seen a bunch of daughters milking this spring and summer and always like them. When I see him in the pen, you they were the cows that made you stop and say, who's she? He's a bull that's uh, 1,700 pounds of milk, two on tight, two on udders, uh, just shy of 2,600 on his DTPI. He's plus 1.5 on DPR. And he's a bull that actually shortens gestationally. He's one of the best bulls in the breed on gestation length at minus 4.5. So uh, maybe in some of the grazing environments and some of those places, I think this bull is going to have a a really, really positive impact. He's got a great linear profile. Again, it's complete right-sided. He adds a little set to the leg. He also is over a point plus on teat length. So again, not to keep talking about the same things, but I, the things that producers keep telling us is we don't want our legs as straight. We don't let our teats as short. And so when you get a bull like this that does those things right, and a lot of our graduates this week did that, uh, wanted to point that out. So Wiggins, another really good. Okay. Brian Anderson, good to see you from down under. Got a question here. Uh, with adjustments to DPR and CCR and Holstein genomic young is dropping about 0.8 uh, to 2, uh, how many GTPI points does that equate to? Um, usually we've talked about, Brian, that if one point of, of fertility index, so the combination, so in the Holstein TPI formula, uh, if you lose one point of fertility index, which is the combination of DPR, CCR, and HCR, which is cow conception rate and heifer conception rate, that equates to about 40 TPI points. So uh, as I said earlier, when you get um, uh, the average changes that I gave uh, early in the presentation, about 30 TPI points and moving about 0.6 on the proven bulls and about 0.8 on the, on the um, genomic young sires, that correlates uh, pretty close to where the changes that we saw yesterday correlate. So, Hopefully that answers that question in terms of, but it's about 40 points for every point of, of um, um, fertility index in the Holstein TPI formula. Looks like we got another question coming in here. Um, how are you doing, Mac Dries? Uh, are you nervous about moving towards Helix and Duke's sons being minus on DPR? You know the DPR foam is set in stone, so it's something we have to rely on. Uh, I've never seen such good production genomic pulls. Maybe that's a positive to be the negative. It's a really good question, Mac. Um, we talk about it in-house here all the time. Um, obviously, we don't want to take big backwards steps in for daughter fertility because we really, even with the adjustments that CDCB made, if you look at the, the, the curves of the cow breeding values and the bull breeding values over, the, over time, all the way back to 1960, obviously for about four decades that, that fertility was dropping. Since the turn of the new millennium, we've turned that corner. We're making progress. Uh, we're, we're doing a much better job uh, in daughter fertility genetically. I think the balancing act between that is we've also made huge improvements uh, reproduction-wise with uh, great technician service, reproductive protocols, modern environments, heat detection systems, uh, you name it. Uh, the industry has thrown the kitchen sink at getting cows pregnant, and they've made good on that investment because I think daughter for or on farm reproduction is probably as good as it's ever been. Uh, I can remember 15 years ago when I was doing consultant work and working with a lot of producers whose uh, average pregnancy rate was in the teens, 12, 13, 14 percent, and we really had to to focus on reproduction because it was a it was a it was the biggest leak in the bucket in terms of overall profitability on a dairy. Is that still the same case today? And I guess each producer has to ask that question for themselves. Uh, am I losing out because I can't get my cows pregnant, um, or am I would I like my cows to milk better, more efficiently, more productively, live longer? because we know that high producing cows and older cows are where we really reap a lot of profit. Uh, those are, I think, anymore are becoming the bigger reasons why we need cows to get pregnant is because we want cows to live a long life. Uh, we don't need them anymore to, to create replacements per se, although that's where we get them from. But with the advent of sex semen and all of us out in the countryside having a lot of replacement heifers and, and, and seeing reproductive strategies reflect that, you almost have to ask your question, what's the balancing act between them? And so back to your question of Helix and Duke, uh, 
I know on my own cows, I'm going to use them until the cows come home because they create cows that are not only great production cows, they're really good type cows and they're, they're balanced cows. Uh, same thing with Frazzle. He's not plus on DPR, but he's 2,100 pounds of milk and a lot of combined fat and protein. And on the dairy where my cows live, we get paid on how many pounds of combined fat and protein per cow we ship per day. And so uh, really big CFP bulls like that, in my mind, are really, really important to put attention to. Uh, so I think that's the question is a philosophical one, and I think each producer has to make those decisions of how much emphasis do they want to place upon uh, DPR, or how much do you want to look at a multi-trade selection index, which is what most of us over time have always suggested to folks. Whether you use TPI, whether you use net merit, whether you use DWP dollars, or cheese merit, um, using a multi-trade selection index and using the best of the breed usually will move you in a direction that you want to go and then slightly adjusting your, your selection from that. So good question, Mac. I hope that answers it, but uh, uh, that's, that's kind of my take on where we're at on DPR and in these extreme production bulls. Um, any high type, another question here from Ryan Welch, any high type bulls coming with no doorman in the pedigree? Um, Yes, there are, um, and if they don't have dormant in them, they probably have McCutcheon. I was going to talk a little bit later about showcase bulls, but I'll talk just briefly about a couple of them. And, and the first one I wanted to mention was, uh, pardon me, Ryan here, but is a dormant son number one a, a live bull in the breed for type? He'll be either number one or number two when the official rankings come out as Jacoby. Uh, again, one of the great bulls of the breed at 3.94 on type, uh, now with uh, over 1,100 daughters scored. Uh, he's winning at shows across the country. They're beautifully well-balanced cows with really good udders. So he's sort of the standard bearer of, uh, of that side of it. I would bring up another bull that is a new graduate from yesterday in the high type end who does not have dormant in his pedigree, and that's a bull, Larcrest Kenosha. And I just need to get his sheet here. Um, but 7H12773. Kenosha is a king boy son from an Atwood daughter that was a marvelous cow of John and Ann Larson's. And the second dam is one of my favorite cows of all time, uh, Larcrest Crimson, the excellent 94 point Ramos daughter, uh, and then back to Cosmopolitan. This bull is going to be somewhere about 8th to 11th on type in the industry. He's 3.47. Uh, we've got a lot of really good daughter photos on this bull as well if you check out our website. Uh, but a bull over three points on udders, three points on type, good in components, and he does not have dormant in his pedigree. And I, I think that he's going to work on some of those daughters, uh, especially the Solomons and those types where we need to get the rump structure a little more right again with beautiful udders. Corvette's going to do that really well. The other bull that uh, I'd like to – the three brothers I wanted to talk about that don't have dormant in their pedigree – are three bulls from Seamers Holsteins, three full brothers, brought them all in because they all did something just a little bit different. And the first one is 7H14838 Seamers Doc Hanford. And I kind of ranked these on type. They're a little different on TPI in terms of the rankings. But Hanford uh, got released here just recently, uh, back last month. He's a King Doc son from a Monterey that was 85. And then uh, Cookie Cutter Mogul Hanker, excellent 94. One of my, again, one of my favorite cows on the continent. She stamps them. She's a marvelous brood cow. And this cow family has put a lot of sons into AI, but particularly she cracks them out from a type respect. And so Hanford is, is 4.08 on type, but he's 3.67 on utter composite. And he's got a beautiful inner profile. Again, maybe cracks the pins just a little bit, but I think on Dorman Bloodlines, this bull is going to work extremely well. His full brother, it was the first one that came out and has had a lot of success and a lot of people like him is 250H in our Generations product line, 250H14579 Seamers Doc Hanford. Now Hanford's a little bit different, or Hancock, excuse me, Seamers Doc Hancock. He's a little higher TPI bull. He's a, he's a 4.06 type bull with three and a half points on other composite, but he's 1,400 pounds of milk. He's 6.8 on Caminese. He's A2A2. And he just does a lot of things, and again, right break even on DPR, he's right at about minus 0.7, which after the change this week is, is about average for the height, or good for the high type side of things. And uh, he's plus on SCR already, but this bull to me with his A2A2 
and the high production, again, really makes a, a logical choice for Dorman daughters. And he does add just a little bit of length to the teeth. And then the third brother is Seamer's Doc Handsome, 7H 14734. He's also 1,400 pounds of milk. He's 3.83 he's on type and three points in utter composite. This bull is the best bull of the three in terms of getting rumps more, more nearly level. Um, with the Monterey Dam, they kind of have a little higher pin setting, but Handsome is almost he's less than a point on, on rump angle. He's got that same extra length of the teeth, beautiful linear profile. And so those three brothers, again, would be some of those that I think are, are very, very uh, unique in their situations that way. The other bull, I've got three other type bulls I'll talk about just quickly as long as we're in this product line. Uh, is and, and King Doc, uh, the first ones are getting ready to calve right now, and, and he's sort of the new standard bearer of this program, and, and there's lots of reasons why. And he's high production, he's high type, he's good fitness, and he, and he kind of covers the bases that we'd like to achieve in showcase selections. So we've got several of his sons, those three I just mentioned, and then 7H14821, uh, Scientific Doc Cole. And he's out of one of my favorite cows at the Nunes's, back to the debutante Ray Cow family. Uh, she's an excellent Dorman daughter, so I've kind of moved on from the options for Dormans. But he is 500 pounds of milk, but he's 375 on type. There was a bunch of brothers. I selected the one I thought was the most balanced. If you look at his linear profile, it's, it's exceptional. Uh, again, he, he's 268 on cell score, so he's really good in that regard. He's a brother to Doppler, if you've used Doppler in our Showcase Selections program. I apologize, this one's not red factored, but I think one of our really, really exciting uh, Dachshunds. The other bull I wanted to bring, the newest addition to the Showcase Selections line is 7H14675, Mr. Duckett C.C. Armstrong. He's our first undenied son. Uh, bred by Mike and Julie Duckett and Craig Crest. Uh, Dan's a 92-point McCutcheon, then an 88-point Gerard, and it's about 10 generations of very good and excellent tracing back to a Canadian cow family. And I always liked this cow, and uh, he came out at 3.81 on, on type. He's 279 on udders and two and a half points on feet and legs. Again, a really good linear profile, break even on DPR again, and he's A2A2, just like undenied. And so this this bull, again, I thought just had the right balance. And I thought he was probably the one of the more complete undenied sons that's out there. We'll have more to come, but he was one of the first ones that I'm excited about Armstrong. And then the last one in the high type world that I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about is 7H14477, and that's Mr. Blonde and Warrior Red. He will be the number one genomic uh, Red Bull of the breed. He's 4.2 on type. He's over three points on udders. Uh, he's one of Avalanche's best sons, uh, and he's red, and he's been doing a great job. Uh, I've heard a lot of folks over the last several months for using Warrior Red, and with good reason. He's a, he's a beautifully made bull. Uh, he's, he's about 300 pounds of milk. Uh, he's, he's just a bull that has done a lot of things right. His dam is a very good doorman up at uh, Blondin Farms in, in Quebec. Uh, the next dam was an 87-point Atwood, and then Rocky Mountain Gold winner was the third dam, and she was excellent in 94, uh, did a lot of winning out west. So I think in the in the high type side of things, we're, we're in really, really good shape, and I was really excited about that. Um, just going to touch on a couple more uh, progeny proven graduates, and then I've got a few of the uh, genomic bulls I wanted to touch on that had really, really good days. Uh, back, so back to the top 100 TPI bulls, uh, 7H12830, Desu Sanderson. And again, this is a cow family that, uh, and a bull that Mark Kearns has always been really, really excited about. Uh, he's another cogent super shot son. He's A2A2. He's BB Kappa casein. He's 2,500 pounds of milk. And he's got about 165 daughters in his proof. Uh, he's 140 on CFP. He's 769 net merit. But he's 6'9 on Cabinies, and his dam's a Massey, and then the next dam was an excellent observer, and then Sully Shuttle May. So the observer was a sister of McCutcheon, and uh, this cow family obviously has done a lot of good for, for both uh, Darren Meyer and for Select Sires, and we're always excited about the bull. Uh, he's going to make more, very commercially friendly cows. They're, they're not real tall, but they're well balanced. And this bull's got a couple of sons that we've been using as sire fathers. And so we're really excited about Sanderson uh, now with Milk and Progeny coming into the Proven ranks as well. And I think uh, just one more of the Proven Bulls I wanted to talk about because he's in the top 100 TPI, and that's uh, 
7H12796, cookie cutter SS hashtag. Also a super shot son, but again from a Cal family that we know extremely well, uh, back from uh, Denise Dickinson's great uh, cookie cutter, Man O' Man Halo. He's a bull again, 1,800 pounds of milk, 133 pounds of combined fat protein, two and a half on type, two and a half on udders, 2545 on his GTPI, but again, his mother's an 88 point day daughter out of Halo herself, and then Gold Holler. And I think if, if you listened here for the last half an hour or so and talking about proven graduates, the thing that I'm really excited about to share with you is all these bulls, and I hear this a lot, that maybe we're moving too fast, or you guys have these bulls that don't have scores and don't have pedigrees. Nothing could be further from the truth because when you look at this group of proven graduates, they all have great maternal lines. They've got full pedigrees. They've got multiple generations of excellent dams. Now, when they were early young sires, when their first usage came out, the day probably was a fresh two-year-old that wasn't scored yet. But if we give these pedigrees a little time to catch up, by the time they've got milk and progeny, most of the time they fill in and you see these really good cow families and bottom side maternal lines that uh, even our most discriminating clients want to have. And uh, most of the time, I think we deliver on that. And so I'm really happy with this group of proven graduates and how good uh, the pedigrees, the values, the cavities, the leg side view, the teeth length, combined fat and protein, a lot of them are good on DPR, but so a very, very exciting class, and I encourage you to check those out either on our website or wait for our directory to come out here in a week or so. I want to switch gears here a little bit and talk about a few of the genomic young sires that, uh, and none of these are actually out this week. Uh, many of them have been out for a little while, but with these changes and with uh, uh, a little time, a little data, uh, these are some of the most exciting bulls that are out there today. Many of them are available for you to use today, both conventional or sex semen, uh, to make your next great generation. The first bull I want to talk about was a bull 7H14703 Midas Touch Hallmark. And he's a re reason son. And the reason sons did very, very well for us yesterday. And I'm happy about that because he's always been one of my favorite bulls um, from up at Bloomingfield Holsteins in Holly, Minnesota. Uh, a road trip I made several years ago that uh, has turned out really well and, and those bulls have done well and, and we're going to see some of his daughters probably start calving later this year. But Hallmark went up very nicely yesterday. He's 2843 GTPI. He's 1,028 on his net merit values. He's 2.65 on somatic cell score. He's plus 1.5 on DPR. He's over two points on utter composite. So he's a reason from a Rubicon from a super sire. So again, this is the same uh, cow family as is the cookie cutter uh, Habitan family and those guys bred by David King uh, out in New York. But this is a really, really uh, exceptional bull, a bull that uh, we've used some as a sire father, probably going to continue to use him because we think he's a special bull. But he is a super sampler and available and I thought I'd point him out to you as well. As we started here talking about Helix, uh, we have several Helix sons and a bull that uh, I know both Rick Verbeek and I have uh, been excited about for a very long time is a bull named uh, 14H7923 King Emerling Helix Doctor. And Doctor has been a bull that uh, we've promoted a lot. If you've seen us out at meetings because we like this bull an awful lot. Uh, his, he's a Helix son from an excellent Yoder. And that cow, every time that Rick is up in, the, in that uh, Bacon Hill area, he talks about this cow, how good she is. Uh, the next dam is a day that went through a national convention sale again, actually out in the state of Iowa. But he's 2839, he's 950 net merit, he's 1900 pounds of milk, he's 171 pounds of combined fat and protein, and 2-2 on DPR. So I think there are the opportunities on him. He's also, since he's been out as an active bull here about a year, he's plus 2.2 on sire conception rate, so he settles cows. He's 2839, as I mentioned, on GTPI. So here's a bull that if you like a lot of production, you like great type because he's 2.37 and 2.29 on, on the utter composite. Got a beautiful linear profile, settles cows. Uh, he's a bull that I would tell you to take a look at, 14H7923 Doctor. Another bull that was recently released here about a month and a half ago that had another very good day, and I talked about Reason and Resolve having good days with their sons yesterday is this bull 14H 14636 Malaria Resolve Trimen. 
and try me as a bull again. We've used pretty heavily as a sire fodder. I was just up at Spencer Hackett's in Minnesota last Wednesday, looked at his mother. She's a very good prophet daughter, doing extremely well. The next dam is a Jabir, and it goes back into a really good cow family in southern Wisconsin at Larson Acres down in southern Wisconsin. But this bull being a little different, doesn't have frazzled in his pedigree, doesn't have a, a lot of super sire in his pedigree. He's a little alternative to what's out there today. Is part of the reason we've used him so heavy as a sire farm. But he's 2836, 970 net merit, just like Frazzled, over 1,000 cheese merit. But he's 1795 in milk. He's 150 pounds of combined fat protein. He's 9.4 in productive life and plus 2.7 on DPR. And that's two things this cow family has done for generations. But he's almost 1,200. He's 1194 on DWP. And he has a pretty famous brother who's one of the high – DWP bulls in the breed named Arrowhead, who's a frazzled brother. What sets Try Me apart from Arrowhead is he's a little better type bull. He's 177 on type, he's 174 on utter composite, really good linear profile, but always been a big, big fan of this cow family. And as I said, looking for something maybe just a little bit different out there today to use on all the frazzled blood and those types of things. I think Try Me is going to be a really, really good choice bull that we've used, as I said, real heavily as a sire father in the last uh, several months. Another one of, and maybe the highest of those Helix Sons, is a bull again, uh, bred by Jonathan Lamb, 7H14, 319, OCD Helix Forte. Well, Jonathan and Alicia had this, have a Delta Francis cow that's just been an amazing uh, cow flaming for them again, back to the Mark Will Durham Felice cow. Uh, the next dam's a, an excellent numero uno, but he's 28.33 in his GTPI. Again, 970 net merit, 164 pounds of combined fat protein, but 7.4 in cavities, 2.26 on type, 2.82 on utter composite, and he's BB kappa casing and over 1,100 pounds of, uh, or 1,100 points of, of DWP. So he does very, very well. Brian Anderson, if you're still listening, this bull is also extremely good in Australia. So uh, he's, he's one of our highest ranking bulls uh, on, uh, on BPI. He's actually our, our number eight bull uh, for the Australian market. But a bull that's 2.9 in sire conception rate, so he's got a proven track record, uh, does a marvelous job in those respects, and a really good linear bull again as well. And, and, and I think is a bull that will fit very, very well on frazzled bloodlines, and uh, so, and, and modesty, and, and a lot of cows are out there to get bred today. So, he was another bull that I wanted to mention uh, today as well. I think I just got one more left here that I wanted to mention, and that bull is is another Helix Suns 14 7H 14320, also from the same a different fork of the same cow family, OCD Helix Alphabet. And Alphabet again been out for a while, but took a nice jump yesterday. He's 2826, a little higher in net merit. Uh, at 981, but 2,300 pounds of milk and 180 uh, pounds of com uh, combined fat protein. He's six and a half on cavities. And he's, again, over two points in udders and PTAT, 2.5 on his uh, sire conception rate. So a lot of these bulls will do a great job in sire fertility as we get through the summer heat here and, and does a lot of things right. Another bull that we've used, sire father as well. So the good news is, is there's a lot of Helix Suns out there if you want to move to the next generation. If you want to use the number one TPI bull in the breed and Helix himself for those huge uh, combined fat protein credentials, uh, I think that's positive as well. Haven't seen any new questions just come in of recent. Um, one thing I did want to mention to you today is uh, uh, when we speak of our next gen program, uh, we did bring in a bull that uh, to the yesterday into that program that everybody's been asking about for a while. And that is 7H14250 Legacy. Legacy is now available for sale. He is in our next gen program. He uh, definitely is still one of the breed leaders. It's been a little bit of a wait as we've used this bull uh, extensively as a sire father for about the last year. Uh, if you look on the high ranking uh, uh, female list that the Holstein posted today with the top 200 females in the breed. Uh, lots and lots of legacy calves in that list. He's, he's made some great sons for us so far, uh, some of our highest ranking sons, but he's also made a lot of really high heifers. 
So the bowl is available. He's going to be um, forty dollars conventional and seventy-five dollars sexed. And uh, so you can use the bowl, uh, order it through NextGen. Uh, you can well, log on to the website of NextGen at SelectSires.com, uh, order an application, uh, or go to our website and click on the application request and uh, go into that. I think it's a marvelous program. We've got four bulls in the NextGen program at this point. Uh, our bull named Renegade, who is a very different uh, outcross kind of bull, is doing a great job. Uh, a uh, bull named Isacow, that's from Sandy Valley, out of the number one cow to breed. Uh, Sandy Valley uh, Rubicon Eternity, and she just went excellent 91 yesterday, so go Eternity. Uh, a bull named uh, Bigelow, who is again a very different, he's a Duke Delroy son from a Top Gun, so he's a different pedigree bull, and then Legacy. Those are the four bulls that they're now called Next Gen Home. Uh, and as I said, if you've got questions about the program, uh, I think if you want to be on the cutting edge of, of the best genetics available, uh, Next Gen is, is a great place to, to, to go to get bulls a little quicker and, and these first few bulls maybe they're a little older before they came in what you can expect coming forward here in the next several months into our next gen program are bulls that are probably 15 to 18 months old that uh, are going to hit this a much much quicker to give you access in joining the club uh, to be able to, to uh, use those genetics earlier and faster and that's really what the program was designed to do uh, particularly for commercial dairymen to get access to the highest and, and newest bulls uh, very quickly. So that's that's part of our uh, uh, reason for, for starting the next gen program. Um, still haven't seen any other questions, but uh, I, I guess I'll throw a shout out if anybody does have any others. Uh, here comes one, looks like Sarah says. Um, but we're, uh, we'll just wait here for a second. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, any genomic sires coming in soon that are over 200 pounds of combined fat and protein like Lionel? Um, there are a couple, uh, and if I can get uh, my computer shut down. Um, but yes, we are. Um, in fact, I just ran a sort about 20 minutes before I came in here to do Facebook Live of just our October pickup group. Uh, there was about 78 bulls that were more than 170 pounds of combined fat and protein. So what I can tell you is, is that is one of our primary fo focuses. Uh, it's probably the first thing that I look at when I'm making a mating is can I at least average 150 pounds of combined fat and protein in that mating and keep everything else balanced and fix uh, what other traits need to be to be looked at. So um, yes, I, I apologize that my computer's asleep right now, Wayne, but he is a bull that, that there are several of them coming in and uh, particularly when we've got Duke influence on the bottom side, which we have a lot of them, we're still working with a lot of these younger Duke daughters, uh, when you can get that built in um, high protein and fat like that bull sires, uh, I can say confidently and, and actually have a couple of, Ly of Lionel sons that are coming in now and, and, and they're delivering quite nicely as well. So. Uh, the short answer is is yes, there should be some coming uh, at least uh, in the next several months, if not uh, right after the first of the year. But uh, again, if you have any questions, shout them out here real quickly. Otherwise, you know, we've used up about 45 minutes of our time here today. Uh, always appreciate the opportunity to visit with you, tell you about Sire Summaries. Uh, as you can tell, we're a pretty happy group here at the moment. Uh, Yesterday was one of the best days we've had in a very, very long time in select sires. And, and we'll be somewhere in the 40, 42, 43 bulls in the top 100. Uh, we're really proud that 10 of the top 14 young bulls in the high genomic uh, young bull calf list yesterday called select sires home or soon to be. And uh, so I can tell you with, with real confidence since the first of the year, uh, we've had a lot of success. Uh, in, in the SIRE program, the next generation that will be released here in 2020. I think you're really going to be excited about those young bulls at that, that point in time. Um, and I just want to, we got one more here, sir. There we go. Two questions, okay. Um, good question from Actories. What bull are you pushing as a SIRE sons? Are you following the Duke Helix bloodline or maybe using their sons? Uh, there's a couple of bulls that we've used quite a bit at this stage of the game. 
One of them is a clay nook Casper son named Magnitude, and his mother is a Lilas daughter, so he's again a little different pedigree kind of bull. Uh, that bull will be released into next gen in September, and so he will be coming out soon, but a real different pedigree bull, way over a thousand net merit. So we've been kind of trying to use some bulls that, that uh, have a little alternative pedigree to keep some balance in our matings. Uh, the other bull that, uh, as I mentioned through the young sires I was talking about, Try Me has been a bull that we've used uh, quite heavily just of recent here. Um, another bull that we've uh, just started using that will be available probably sometime uh, right after the first of the year or in the December sire summaries is a bull named Roland Maximus. And he is a Roland out of a blowtorch sister to Legacy and uh, is 1,062 net merit. Um, so those bulls will be coming quite quickly, uh, but they're what we're using quite a bit right now. So our next wave of really exciting bulls uh, that we're going to use are, are some Roland Sons out of really, really good deep cow families. And uh, then it will, before you know it, we'll be into the Solution Sons and the Huey Sons, and we'll be onto the Frows of Grandsons here probably by uh, by the end of the year, or probably sometime after Thanksgiving, we'll be into the Solution uh, Sun era and, and starting to use those quite a bit. So, um, and then just still looking for the best females and males that we can find out there to, to make great combinations and, and bring the next generation to you. Um, the other question I got from David Ferguson, uh, how are the Millingtons looking? One of my favorites. The, the more that you see second lactation, uh, a bull that I have always liked because he's got shamrock in his pedigree. He still ranks right near the top of the TPI list. Uh, always been a bull, bull that's one of my favorites. And the, and the Millingtons are real clean bone cows. Uh, they end up, uh, the rear udders, you have a little more pop and bloom to them and the calf for the second time. Uh, they look like they spill milk, uh, and, and that's what you'd expect for a bull that's, that's uh, a good CFP, high TPI bull again. But I'm a really big Millington fan. That's part of one of the reasons that we really like Renegade, because he is a Jalta Oak from a Millington Dam. And so that's been one of the great parts about using Renegade uh, as heavily as we have as a sire father, because he's got a Millington Dam. Looks like we got one more here. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's this guy in Sox City, Wisconsin, that would like to know, why do you think there's so much genetic diversity on current bulls as opposed to in the past? Or, um, I think a little of it is by design. I think that uh, genetics and breeding cows have always been an interesting uh, exercise, I guess you'd say. And, and I think if you go back historically 35 years ago, and I can remember when, when I started in the AA industry, uh, people would ask when I'd stop on a farm, well, why is everything Black Star Mark and Bell? And then uh, we went into an era years ago where we had um, everything was Bellwood, Marshall, and Patron. And then we moved into an era where everything was Planet and Shottle. And there's, there always seems to be a dominant bull of his generation, but oftentimes all of a sudden there's a bull that comes along and uh, and changes the changes the rules of the game. And I think sometimes preferences change and those types of things. Um, is as much as this company loved Bellwood Marshall, uh, the stillbirth thing was a challenge. And as time wore on, he became less influential in pedigrees as we move towards more health and fitness. So I think consumer preferences push us in certain directions. And diversity is obviously something that people have been asking us about. Uh, we don't take it lightly. The genomic era is, is a tough exercise in keeping uh, different bloodline sire stacks, and uh, we're always on the, on the hunt to do them. I would tell you that that's one of the beautiful parts of the ARC program is that we make matings that maybe are a little tougher to get done in the field. Uh, I can guarantee you that if I had offered Delta Oak to a lot of my clients, they probably would have not been real enthusiastic to make that mating. But we made that mating in the art program on that Millington daughter that I just mentioned. And now all of a sudden we have a bull that is uh, a very unique to the marketplace without frazzled and shot and Jedi and modesty and, and, and achiever and, and some of the other Joe Super, the other very popular bulls in the industry. So you always try to find that bull and then use some niches uh, to, to make those and you make some matings where they're different. One of my favorite bulls that uh, I have got in my file at the moment is, is a Renegade Sun from a granite from a Draco, bred by Sandy Valley, because he's got different 
uh, bloodlines to them, or riveting sun from a peacock line from an Oktoberfest. Different bloodlines to traditional select sires breeding where we can bring those bulls in and they'll be the right fit on the next generation. So I think part of it is, is sometimes you get lucky, but I think also part of it is by design that uh, we're looking to always look for something that's a little bit different off the reservation. I think we've got great partners that also do the same thing. Uh, I've got certain breeders that they want to know, how can I make a mating that's a little different? Can I, can I make something that's unique? And, and we, when, where there's will, uh, there's success. So um, long answer, Mitch, but that's the best answer I can give you today. So with that, we've used up just about uh, all 60 minutes. We Again, I want to thank you for joining us for Facebook Live. Always a lot of fun. Um, we'll look forward to visiting with you again at the next Cyrus Summary, but I hope you have a great, uh, successful harvest this fall. I hope you get some feed wherever you're from, and uh, we'll talk to you again the next time. So have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you.